All right. Yo, we're back. We're back. Best night of the week. I just want to hear real quick who's excited to be here tonight. Let's go. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. Dude, I just want to say that was one of like my favorite Wednesday night worship experiences in a long time. I just feel like it was very genuine and just very like there and we were we were there. We were like everybody was engaged and it was a very exciting thing. So I, I enjoyed that a lot. And guess what? We could do it again. Two more songs after me. So listen, real quick. Like I've said over and over again, I just need like 20 minutes, 15, whatever it's going to be. I just need y'all's attention. So wherever you're at right now, if you cannot pay attention to what I'm saying, what God is saying to you through me, then do that. Be, be, be in that space. Um, and if you can't do that, door's right there. So um, yeah. So look, habits. Habit series. I'm very excited about this. We're going to be doing this for a little bit. We're going to be in this space in the habit series for a little bit, and we're going to have a bunch of different um, people speaking, so it's going to be a cool thing. And yeah, like Addison mentioned, Far Retreat is next weekend, and I am beyond excited about that experience um, and what, what God is going to do um, in that, because guess what? This group, since I've been here, has not been able to have a Fall Retreat. Last year, we didn't do Fall Retreat, so this is new for all of us, so I'm very, very excited about what God is going to do. I'm very excited what God is doing in this room. There are people every Wednesday that are just making decisions um, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and walk with him, and it has just been an amazing month. I mean, we've only been doing this for a little bit less than a month, and just a lot of cool things are happening, and all of you get to be a part of it. So I just want to say we're very encouraged by this group and the opportunity that we get. I want to start with a story, and as you know, my stories can be funny, and my stories cannot be funny, but mostly funny, right? Um, and so real quick, has anybody ever had like a goal? All right, sweet. Thank you. Um, I had a goal one time to be like a really good surfer. And when I mean really good surfer, like, bro, I was like wanting to be like a professional surfer. And like, not a lot of people want to do that when they live in Atlanta, like, right? Like in this, in Georgia, like that doesn't happen. Um, and so I surf, like I like to do that and I'm decent at it. And, but when I was younger, I was like, well, let me pick up skimboarding because I'm good at surfing like an actual wave. So let me see if like skimboarding is the vibe. And if you know kind of like how a skimboard is built, it's like heavy and like thicker wood, right? It's like got a little more weight than a surfboard. Surfboards like usually kind of foamy and lighter and can like float better. And I was like, you know what, dude, I could like shred the skimboard. Like I, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Like I've always, I'm like, all right, we're just going to do this. And Basically, one day I was, I was carrying my skimboard, like, back to the, the cribbo down at the beach. And as you know, like, the skimboard's got, like, a point at the front. You know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. And I take this, I got this skimboard in my hand, and, like, I got the sand on my hands, you know? And, like, dude, slips right out of my hand. And it just lands directly on my big toe, like on the pavement. So it was, so like, I, I mentioned that detail because it's like, bro, if my foot was in the sand, like the sand would have gave me like a little cushion. We're going to wait for y'all. It's hilarious. It's so funny. Thank you for that. <laughs> They're over there last. <laughs> so I dropped my skimboard on my big toe, like on the pavement, and they just, and dude, like, it was like destroyed. Like my big toe was like, the back was like out of my body. Like it like, it like, it like broke in half in like one of those numbers. And like, it was like, it was one of those things like, you know how you break your toe now and it takes time for it to come off? No time needed. And I guess you could say like, I gave up on the idea of skimboarding. I was like, you know what? Skimboarding's maybe not for me and you know, honestly, like mentally, I'm kind of just completely off the idea of like skateboards and surfboards now a little bit, less surfboards, but like because it's like toe, you know, and like now I'm kind of mentally aware, like I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when I go around corners of like rooms and stuff, like my big toe, I'm just like, like I don't do that. Like my big toe is, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that again. I'm just mentally messed up. And so where I'm going with this story is that a lot, I want you to think of you in a goal, like something that you've always wanted to do in your life. Who, maybe it's who you want to be. Maybe it's who you want to be when you're out of high school or who, what college, whatever. 
And a lot of times that goal, that dream, that vision, something happens. Something happens in us and we forget that. Or we, or we no longer put the work in to reach that end goal. Does that make sense? Maybe, it's, maybe you do break your toenail, right? And it's like, I'm done with like, graduating high school. Like, I'm done. Like, you know what? I can't do it anymore. Whatever it is. But I want you to think of this. When you have a goal in mind, when you have something you want to be or a person that you want to be, are you going to put the work in? Are you going to do what is necessary to get there? We all want this, this perfect thing where it's like we just get whatever we want in the end. We're just going to, we're just going to get there. We don't know how, but it's just going to happen. And something that I feel like we do as a youth, so like I, I, I kind of still like associate myself with y'all because like it's like I'm kind of in that space, right? And I want you to think of it. It's very easy. Think about this. It's very easy when, you, when you're committed to something or when you're dedicated to something to put the work in at first, but then what happens? We forget about it later, right? Who's, who's had that happen before? It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it, but later happens, right? Later happens, and then it just kind of disappears, right? Like the goal, the end goal, it just kind of disappears. Why? It's because the work came in. You had to do it, all right? So we're moving forward through this. Think about this. It is very easy for something to start out as important. So in the beginning of something, so Colby, I'm right up here. It is very easy for us to start something and in the beginning of it, it be important. And then later, it becomes forgotten. Okay? That's the first point. Yeah. Boom. It is very easy for something to be important and then forgotten. All right? It's easy for us to start something, but then when it gets tough, when it gets difficult, that is when it becomes forgotten because we no longer want to put the work in. If you need to take notes, back of that game sheet. Boom. Pen and paper. Let's do it. Someone come, someone show me their notes later. And guess what? Oh, this is, this is where it gets fun. We're going we're gonna to have some fun tonight. The very same thing happens with relationships. If you're in middle school, y'all love to hype up y'all's relationship in the beginning when you're dating homegirl or homeboy, and then it gets hard, and then you just break up. Stuff gets difficult, and then you just break up. Y'all just say, oh, we got in a fight, so we broke up. Or high school, same thing. And if friendships, friendships is the same thing, family, whatever. I'm going to wait for y'all. It's very easy for relationships to have the same thing. It's important in the beginning. It gets hard. Work has to be put in. Like boys, you got to take them on dates. You got to talk to them and whatever. And you're just like, bro, I'm trying to play COD or Fortnite with the boys. Like, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'm bre we're breaking up. We're breaking up. I can't do it anymore. Six traders like, I did it on my girlfriend. <laughs> what are y'all like? Y'all date in six trades? Like, what do y'all do? All right. Shh. Shh. Back up here. So relationships have this tendency, and I'm going to move forward into the next statement. The same thing happens in our relationship with God. It is very, very easy for us as a group, as an individual in the room, whoever you are, it is very easy for you to have a season or a moment. It's like, what, like the now, like, I got to say, like, I, Jesus, like, it just found me. Like, it was, um, I love it. Like, when I went to the now last year, like, Jesus just saved me. Like, and it was so good. Like, I love God. I love God, Right? That was my acting. That was my uh, seventh grade girl impersonation. Um, so, but listen, when it comes to our relationship with God, seriously, listen to this. It is so easy for it to be important in this space. So like when we're at Fuge or Fall Retreat or GS Weekend or The Now or Stories Night, whatever it is, it's like it's very easy for, for God to be important then but then, like, life happens, and then it's forgotten, right? Your relationship with God is forgotten. 
right? Your time with God one-on-one doesn't exist, right? More things become important than that. It becomes forgotten. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. See, I love to talk when I don't want you to talk, but when I want you to talk, y'all don't, y'all don't do it. What's going on here? When I ask for a response, you say it. When I don't, you don't. Does that make sense? Good. All right. So, going into the Bible now. We're going to read the Bible. Is that cool? All right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. We're good. We're good. Listen. So, in the Bible, people loved to question Jesus. Has anybody ever heard of this? Right? We read the Bible, and they're always like, dude, Jesus, like, what about this? Or what about this? Right? And so... In the Bible, they love to ask Jesus questions. And in this passage, before this passage, in Mark 12, they ask Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Has anybody heard of this passage before, right? No, good. It's going to be a good night. The first thing that this guy asks Jesus in this passage is, what is the greatest commandment? He's basically saying, what is the one rule that I can follow and be good for the rest of my life, right? Would you all like to know what that is? If there was one thing you had to do, we're going to figure it out tonight. So listen, right here. In Mark 12, 30, this is what Jesus says. The guy asks, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Leave that on the board. Look at that. Y'all read that. Write that down. Whatever you need to do. Jesus says the greatest commandment, the one thing, is this. We can go home now, right? No. No. Why? It's because this is the what. So it's like, what is the greatest commandment, right? This is the what. Now, what question are we thinking of next? What do you think? Okay, I like the why. How, right? It's like, all right, Jesus, sweet. We got this, right? What is the greatest commandment? What are we supposed to do? Y'all hear that all the time, right? People are always telling you, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Well, tonight, I want to provide you the how. All right? Because all we hear a lot and the way we honestly carry ourselves is we're always just like, you got to do this better. You got to do this better. You got to do this better. You got to be a better Christian. You got to be this. And this is for both the person who is a Christian in the room. If you have accepted Jesus, this series is going to be great for you. And guess what? If you feel like you may not, you may not be walking with Jesus right now. Guess what? This is good for you too. This is the how. We're about to talk about this. What is the how? John 15, verse 5. This is where we're going. Y'all listen to this. We just talked about the what? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, strength, all that stuff. We're going to talk about the how. I love this, dude. I'm telling you. If you've you've never listened before in here, listen tonight. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. All right, we're talking about a tree, right? We're talking about a vine. Jesus is painting this picture. This is the how. If you want to know how you can love the Lord God with all your strength, how you can walk with Jesus, and how you can stay connected with God, even if stuff gets hard, even if you start to get introduced to new sin, even if you start to get unaccepted by people and you want to be better, right? All that stuff, we hear all about it. This is the how. All right, if you're going to walk out of this room and you want to know Jesus and you want to walk with Jesus every day through the thick and thin, stick in right here. Think of a vine. All right, who knows what a vine is, right? It's a, it's a thing that kind of like randomly grows. It's like, where does this come from, right? It's a vine. Usually it's on like a wall and it's going up. It's got these branches and they sometimes produce these weird fruits that you're like, eat it, but probably not because you're going to die. You know what I'm talking about? Those weird little red berries. Everybody's like, if you eat it, you're going you're to die. I know, I know, like, Colby is one of those guys. It's like, they're little red berries. Colby's like, <laughs> 100% eat them. 100% eat them. All right, listen. So think of a vine, all right? Like, look, this wall right here. I've never came back here before during this. This is neat. Look, wall right here. Think of a vine, all right? This one vine that's going from bottom to top, right? And then it's got these branches, and it's got these little fruits on it, right? Raspberry bush, whatever you want to think. That's what Jesus is talking about here. And what does he say? He says in verse 5, I am the vine. So Jesus is the central part of this vine. He is the whole thing. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. 
Whoever abides in me, later he says, will bear much fruit. If you want to walk with Jesus, if you want to connect with God, you're going to be a branch to the vine. All right? Now listen to me. What is true about a branch when it comes to the vine? What does the vine do for the branches? Louder. Provides water. Nutrients. There it is. I needed that one. Listen. High school guys, come on. The vine is here. The branch needs the vine. Because what is true about the fruit? The branch can't produce the fruit without what? Resources. Resources from what? The vine, right? The branch can only create fruit if it is connected to the vine, all right? So if you're in this room and your question is, is how do I connect with God? How can I fight this sin struggle? How can I feel better at school? Or how can I just accept myself for who I am? The truth here that you all need to think about is are you a branch? Have you become a branch to the vine? Because Jesus is saying, I'm the vine, and you cannot produce fruit. What is fruit in the Bible? Someone tell me. What does it mean? What does the fruit of the Bible mean? I need the big picture answer. I'm hearing nothing right now that I need. All right. Shh. Fruit is good works. Deeds for God, right? Serving the Lord, right? That is what spiritual fruit that Jesus is referring to. So the big question is, are you producing fruit in your life? Is the vine Jesus using you to produce fruit? Are you growing? Are you spiritually Growing. Is, your, is the branch growing for you? I want y'all to think of something. This is an imagery for you. I got this lamp right here. I brought a lamp up here. I want y'all to think of this. All right, so the lamp's on. I want you to think of you, you as the lamp, right? All right? This is another way of explaining the fruit. I think that group over there needs to see this. Move that. This is the light, this is your life, all right? This is your spiritual life with Jesus. Walking with Jesus, right? Living with Jesus, all right? And I want you to think of this. What is true about this light in relation to what's going on right here? It's a power outlet, right? When, when you are living your life without Jesus, you're disconnected from him. What happens is, is this is going on right here. You're not connected, all right? You don't know the Lord. He is not working in your life. So what happens is spiritually, I want you to think of this, spiritually without Jesus, your light is off. Why? It's because you're walking in darkness. Jesus is not lighting the way for you. And what he's saying in this, I am the vine, I produce. The same thing I want you to think about is when Jesus enters your life, when you become a branch and are producing fruit that comes from Jesus, this is what happens. You plug up with Jesus, wrong way, got to twist it. And you light up, right? And the light, and the light is on. When you're connected with God, this is what's happening. You are walking through your school and you are lighting up the lives of others. There's so much negativity from schools, your community, your friend group, and honestly, we get a lot of it in here too. And when we are plugged into Jesus every day, this is you in the darkness of our community. And in order to love God, we have to be connected to God. The truth is, is that we can't love the Lord God with all your strength if we're not connected to God. Why? Think about a relationship. In order for you to get to know somebody better, you have to be connected, right? A great thing we do, we follow each other on social media right? And what is that? We're connecting with each other, right? We're seeing what we're doing, 
keeping up with it, Snapchat, all that crap, and we're, we're, we're keeping up with what we're doing. Now, how much time do you spend keeping up with what your friends are doing on social media compared to how much time you're keeping up with what God's doing in your life? I want you to think as an individual, what does that look like? I hear so often people going, I don't have time to get in the Word. I don't have time for this. Let's check your screen time. I can find some time for you. Am I wrong? Connecting with God takes effort. This is what Habits is about. This is what the series is about, is we are going, as a church, as a ministry, we are going to adopt ways in your life. It looks different for you. Habits that you can create to connect with God more. Because I promise you, there's habits that we can get rid of that will open up opportunities for you to spend more time with God. Am I correct? I'm correct. Connecting with God. What does that need to look like for you? There's two people in the room, all right? Very, very big things. Two people, two types of people. You have either accepted Jesus, you've been baptized, you've been walking with God, and maybe, maybe just life has gotten in the way. Maybe, maybe you're, you're a high school and you started to work, and life, I know, like I know. But maybe you have just gotten disconnected because life gets in the way, and you, you mentally are learning new things, you're being distracted by other things. And that's causing you to feel a little disconnect. Or maybe you're a Christian in the room and you're young, you're in middle school, high school, um, early high school, middle school, and you're doing sports. Maybe sports is coming up, and maybe that's going on. Or, or maybe you're just getting distracted. But for that person in the room, make time. Because if we are disconnected from the vine, Satan is going to slowly and slowly create a bigger distance in that disconnect. And for the other person in the room, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you can't point a day where Jesus saved me and I got baptized, that's you. Simple as that. I'm going to keep telling you that. But guess what? That's it. Spiritually, lights out. Why, if you can't figure it out, walk out that door. It's like the fifth time that I've been distracted because of what you've been saying over there. You're not even paying attention. You're just saying amen. And so without Jesus, we're unplugged. And so this is the challenge. This is the challenge for the whole group in here is first, if you are, if you've been walking with Jesus, you've been walking with God, connect with God. I want this group, this is, this is what I want to see for everybody in this room, is that I want us to be spending one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. I want you to figure out when in my 24 hours that God has given me can I spend time with him? Because the reality is, is that every breath that you take is a gift from God. Do you know that? Do you, do you think about that sometimes? Like this morning, I really did wake up for the first time in a while, and I was like, dude, like, wait a second. Like, I didn't have to wake up today, right? And so I want you to think, God gives you 24 hours. Where can you sacrifice time to connect with God more? Because the reality is, is you're getting a lot of crap from the world. You're getting a lot of lies and a lot of things. Where in your day can you let God pour in you because I promise you if you just show up to church on Wednesday bro you're not even breaking even right so whatever whatever that is the challenge is to start with 15 minutes a day 15 minutes to just the Bible app y'all know the Bible app has got like reading plans and stuff on it it's pretty cool you should do it 15 minutes in the Bible app man just read something learn something or whatever that is for you maybe it's just listening to worship music and praying and listening to God I dare you to spend time in silence. I dare you. Some of y'all probably scared of crap from that, dude. You're like, dude, I don't know what I'm going to think. I don't know what I'm going to like hear in silence. Or maybe you and your small group need to coordinate something. Like, all right, we're going to do this Bible plan together. We're just going to do it. I do it all the time. Whatever it is. Prayer. Challenge you to pray daily about something. Whatever you need to pray about. When we start doing that, we connect with God more. And God desires this. God desires to spend time with you. Do you know that? Do you believe that? God desires to hear from you. If there's a hard thing going on in your life right now, 
Tell him. He knows. God desires to talk to you and spend time with you. Let's give it to him. And so I want us to start that as a group right now during this next time of worship. I want you to just spend, that's what worship is. That worship is your time, all right? We, we, we take it as like a hangout time sometimes or we do whatever with it. It's like, dude, we don't do worship for no reason. Y'all ever thought of that? Why do we do worship in here? It's because we want to spend time with God in that time. Read the words, like whatever. Be in, sit, sit still and be silent, whatever. But find a way for you to just spend time with God because he desires to spend time with you. And you may feel like nobody wants to spend time with you, maybe because of stuff that's going on in your life. But surprise, God wants to spend time with you. And he wants to connect with you. And he wants you to make time for him. So I'm going to pray. And we're going to get into worship. Father God, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing in this church. I thank you for what you're doing in this community. Thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of these students. I thank you for life change. I thank you for your work. I thank you for the fact that you desire to be with us. You desire to connect and spend time with every person in this room. And so, God, I just pray over this space. I pray over this time of worship. And, God, that you just, Holy Spirit, I pray you just come inside of this building and you just speak into all of our hearts and that we just connect with you in this moment. I pray over these students as they go back into school and sports and all the things that they have going on in their lives, and I pray that you just be with them and protect them, God, from the enemy. Um, And God, we love you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.